Who the boy got hands like Channing Crowder? I got an interception. RC, how many interceptions you caught versus drop? What's the ratio? I've only dropped, I think, two in the game. Like sure? Like sure. Uh -huh. Only dropped two, maybe only one actual drops. I think it was one against Baltimore in the end zone. In over the 13 boy, years. Because the boy ain't never been that hot at me. You got snapped. He on was him. hot. Because afterwards they kicked the field goal and we lost by a field goal. <laughs> wow. Is he going to climb up the joint? Uh, <laughs> Why you ain't go through the go. door, dog? <laughs> you got to say it. Why you ain't go through the door? I don't think I have medicine. I'm trying to show you niggas I still got it. I'm going to get to the fifth floor. Let's see if you niggas are able to do the shit I'm able to do. Uh-oh. I keep telling my on this fifth floor is dangerous up here. That's what it is. Dangerous up here, baby. Shoot, my knees shot now, dog. I ain't fooling with it. I'm going to be on the fifth floor soon. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'm probably gonna be right up here exiting out this motherfucker saying, come on in. Snoop, you don't got a Tesla, bro. Yeah, I do. That ain't no man car. Shit. Nigga, I can go to sleep in that motherfucker. <laughs> Drive itself. <laughs> as, as dope as I be, nigga, I need, I need a place to sleep. <laughs> OG, what's up with you, baby? OG, what's <laughs> happening with you? What up, boy? <laughs> hey, it ain't no man's car. It's a, it's a grown man's car. Oh, OK. A, a old, matter of fact, I say an old man's car. Yeah, you pl <laughs> plug you know in your is. little, little micro. Machine. That traffic, be like, you know what? <laughs> <That's a wrap. laughs> you can't do that shit in none of these. <laughs> take it, take me home. All this shit the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> I need to preserve my motherfucking right leg. I'm gonna roll up oh. something real quick, fellas. I gotta get my Go mind do your right. Thing, man. Do your thing, baby. Yeah, wow. You gotta have man. everything out. Shoot, we want it all out. It's freaking Snoop. Gotta have it. Yeah, gotta man. have it out. He represent every company in the world. Snoop like Shaq. He is the I'm trying to be like Shaq. I asked that uh, for a commercial deal for the general once upon a time. Because the general out here is like a big commercial uh, with the car insurance and shit. Uh -huh. mm. I called the nigga. I said, Shaq, come on, my nigga, give me some love. That nigga plugged me up with the CEO and everybody. He said, is there anything else you need me to hook you up with? <laughs> I'm like, nah. When you get another one of them big ass deals, just think about me. I'm the little homie. Let me get some of that shit. So he plugged <laughs> me up. He plugged me up with like two or three deals. Like he he's very unselfish. Like, you right. know, certain get that position and be like, nah, me, 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 me. Yeah. He looks out. He, nah, he good those. people, though. Oh, yeah, no. That's who Him and Magic to. Johnson probably the coldest, too, at giving that game away. Right. That boy, Question. Snoop. We got Snoop. Question. Cereal. Hey, man, Master P taught me, man. I, I spent three years on No Limit University. I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Snoop. I used to visit the campus of LSU Southern, and I learned the game. Snoop, the first time I met you, bro, we was hooping at the wreck. Come on, I man. was in college, Oh, you man. already know. Yeah, they, I was in college, Scrap dog. Swift was, your, was, the, uh, was, the, was the big guy That was Stoma I was there, yeah. Come on, man, quit playing yeah. with me. We was I, at the wreck, dog. That's we where I got my hoop. two licks from, bro. <laughs> and I know y'all know CJ Stroud played in my league. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. we were talking about. We were talking yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. That's our guy. Good kid, man. He really is. A yeah. Great kid, man. He really is. Tried to make the man look bad. Talking about the damn test. <laughs> uh, whatever that shit was. Like, my test is when the game started. Yeah. <laughs> about no ABCs. Put him in front of me and watch me go to work. Yeah, that's what he did, <laughs> yeah. too. That's what we do. Number two. You ain't putting none of them other quarterbacks through that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what comes to territory. You out to Snoop you football league. They gonna be on you. Hey, yeah. Snoop, Jordan Poole say he looking for you, too, now. He supposed to be. <laughs> he did everything I said he was going to do game one. I don't give a fuck about what he do from here on out. <laughs> he made me look like a motherfucking ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> they said, RC, man, what do you think about Snoop's prediction? I said, we be letting you know. Hey, <laughs> you better know we know. We yeah, let, let you know. I need a lighter. Give me an ashtray, huh? Give me an ashtray. Yeah, yes, wait for it to pass. Master P, Should James, man. I'm boy genius. <laughs> I'm boy genius, man. Is it good though? What? I'm giving y'all a couple of boxes to roll with. Y'all gonna have some in actuality in real life, not like everybody else. But P been doing a great job of giving it away, going to see the kids, and making sure that you know people get a chance to taste it and sample it. And it's a big ass deal with Post. Yeah. They make raisin bread. You know what I'm talking about? His son who? Going oh, to Memphis? Oh, Mercy? Ain't he? Houston? He cold. Yeah, he going to Houston. He cold. Y'all know I'm a fan of the show, man. Big fan of the show. That's love, Just bro. letting y'all know. Appreciate it. Fan of all of y'all. Fred, I used to play with you on NCAA. You was my running back with them gators, They already man. like to fuck with me and call me old, bro. Man, <laughs> I'm just saying. 
just saying, Fred. Nah, nah, nah. Niggas didn't know your name until I made it famous in the hood. Like, nigga, Freddie Taylor, nigga. Hey. What are you talking about, nigga, to the rack, nigga, to the house? I was fucking with you one time, but from afar. I said, man, Snoop got to know it. As, as the stiller killer. <laughs> yeah, I used to put that pressure right, on yeah, these yeah, boys. Yeah, you used to put the pressure on them with them Jacksonville boys. You wow. used to put that pressure yeah, on them. Yeah, that's the truth. Hey. Yeah, I'm, I'm not lying. The, the crazy thing is, though, when he was playing with you on NCAA, it was before they dropped 187. That was before deep cover and everything. When he was playing with you on NCAA. Real, real funny. Yeah, that <laughs> doggy style back. wasn't yeah, in. That was standard definition. It wasn't no standard. high definition in that SD. game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Snoop, man. Hey, you were playing with Freddie T on NCAA, dog. That's from Florida, Florida State, all y'all. We used to get it in. It was a Florida thing. Miami, everybody was winning in the Florida area. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cow, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. But well, welcome to the pivot, OG. It's, it's an you. honor, you know, from myself, Chan, Freddie T. We grew up on your music, and then to watch you transcend and continue to stay not only relevant, but still be one of the biggest stars in hip hop, pop, entertainment. It just shows the way you were able to evolve, the way you were able to adapt, and the true intelligence that it takes in order to say, okay, here is where things are going. Watch me continue to evolve. We've gotten to see you go from the deep covers and the doggy styles to the father that's putting his son in the best position to get an opportunity to play college ball, to the man in the community that is now seeing kids drafted through his Snoop Youth Football League. And so I just want to say from myself to you, man, just thank you. And we appreciate all you've done and all you've shown us that men, you know, can be that grow up in places like we do. Hey man, it's appreciative and um, I love the fact that I can actually get called coach when these young men become grown men. That lets me know I've done my part and that feels good to me because I remember as a kid how important coaches were to me. Whether it was sports, whether it was school, whatever, the coaches always had an impact on me because they cared about my life other than sports. So I wanted to always replicate that and once I got in a position to do that, that was like my main purpose was to help the kids and to give back something that I was taught so that way they can see that they can get further than me because the mistakes that I made, they don't have to make because I'm gonna give them the opportunity that I didn't have. And Snoop, you always get back to the kids, Snoop Football League. This was a long time ago with you and Fred, but as a child, <laughs> I don't know how the fuck long ago that was, but no, man, you're, like, your upbringing, you're so successful. I think people forget that you grew up rough. Like, right. how, how, was, how, was it, how was the Snoop puppy man, before it was he became dog? I grew up with two brothers, a single mother. I got hand-me-down clothes from my cousins. We always had a meal, we always had a place to stay, but we wasn't rich. And I wouldn't say we were poor, but we didn't have the finer things, but you couldn't tell because somebody in the family always would donate. So hand-me-down, layaway, you know, two boxes of cereal to last a whole month. You know, ham and cheese sandwiches after school, tater chips, bologna sandwiches, you know, I come from that. So don't just think of the successful, you know, iconic money financial wizard or genius, so to speak. Think about the struggle that it took to get here. That's how we learn how to sustain and keep it. See, a lot of people get it and lose it. I've been in this game for 30 years, and I'm still able to have fun and be relevant and not be in a financial disaster because I think as a businessman, and I always think with my heart rather than my mind. You just said you've been in the game for over 30 years. And when I, when I think of you, I think of you as the, probably the most respected and, and not likable in a kitty sense, but like everybody respects you. Everybody know you're the OG, they fuck with you, you know, and, and, and that's what it is. How were you able to sustain that and continue to, to pivot and recreate yourself? The sustaining part of it all, Fred, is more about the work ethic. You gotta have work ethic, and that's with any profession that you're in. When I look at the greats like LeBron James, and I look at him 20 years in the game and still able to keep his body right and his mind right and his skills right, it's work ethic, it's preparation, it's the things that you do as a student while still being great. And I feel like I've always been a student the whole way. I've never been too big to not want to learn. I've always been able to get in the passenger seat. I don't have to have my hands on the steering wheel. Right. I can pump the gas. 
I can go get the groceries. Some people get this, to this position and they feel like they have to be served rather than doing the serving. Mm -hmm. And I think to sustain, you got to always know that a true king loves to serve rather than be served. First off, man, I forgot to do it. Shout out to Happy Dad. We got the Let me the get death one row Johnny you know in the saying? building. What Johnny motherfucking ass at? <laughs> you know what I mean? Johnny gonna get me if I don't drink one of these motherfuckers. Yes, sir. Fuck Cheers, it, fellas. Cheers. You know Toast to partners. success and nothing less. Yes, sir. To a room full of happy dads. <laughs> happy dad. Yeah. Snoop, when you got your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, uh, Dr. Dre, who we all understand how close that relationship is, said you should have gotten a star just for surviving the 90s. Wow. For all the things you went through, the adversities that you faced, the friends that you lost, the, the way that people were after your life, making a transition and going to No Limit, where I met you at the mm -hmm, rec center mm -hmm. in Baton Rouge at LSU. Talk a little bit about some of the things that a young Snoop endured when he was just coming into his own and truly becoming a megastar in hip hop? Well, I had to leave the gang culture behind because it was so connected to who I was, being an ex-gang member and then having that in my music, having that in my lifestyle. So some of the things I had to learn how to gradually grow away from was becoming a burden because some of these guys were my friends and my homies and I thought I needed them and I thought they were making me go. But as I grew and got further and further up in the game, I seen that they were more baggage and more of a liability than an asset. And when you learn to be a businessman, it's not personal for me to tell you, hey, Ryan, I love you, but we can't kick it no more, dog. I'm on this path and you on that path. Just like I, we had to make that decision when we became football players. When we became whatever we became, we had to make the decision of this baggage right here may be the family. It may be the homie. It may be mama. It may be daddy. It may be whoever it is, but we have to make it the ultimate decision to know that we got to carry this baggage and we got to do all of this work. So we need to make sure that our circle is right, starting with us first. A lot of times when that. You know it was going to get you too. Everybody ain't got you. <laughs> 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 it's gonna get, not going to get you. He's going to try to slide in real quick. Like the plane going to go. No, my, good my, shit, cuz. I thought my light skin status was going to No, that don't right. work. I'll be sure days is over with. Hey, I've been telling you that. See, I'm glad Snoop said that. He keeps Ooh. talking about President Obama. The rock guy. Drake, had it for a minute. Drake. I ain't gonna front y'all had it for a minute. Light skin was running shit. Y'all was running things. Right now. <laughs> but we back now, baby. <laughs> the, the rock. The rock black. We back. We about 49, 51 right now. We got y'all by like two. Y'all coming back though. We got y'all right now though. Y'all do have Steph right now though. Boy, do that. Steph. Yeah, they do. <laughs> to get his knee right. right. If his knee right, we got Clay too. Y'all motherfuckers got Dennis Schroeder and <laughs> Patrick Beverly, you Michael ugly Blackson. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Blackson. <laughs> Michael Blackson got Charles back. <laughs> but Snoop, it's funny because this is said a lot. When you got to knowingly separate yourself, knowing that my best intentions are right. this way and you're not on that path, right. then they're going to call you fake. You forgot where you came from, all that other stuff. That come with it. But if you notice what you were saying about the speech, the, uh, the Walk of Fame speech, at the end I said I want to thank me. Mm -hmm. And I went into all of the things that I did so people would know it's okay to pat yourself on the back and give yourself credit because you're the one that's gonna have to do all of this work. Even if you get signed as an NBA, NFL player, when the lights go off, you gotta go do the work to keep that job, to be able to get a better check for the next time. So that's the things that people don't understand that I've been able to separate is that I know how to lock and load on what I need to be doing. And if that means cutting you out or getting rid of you because you're not an asset and you're a liability, then that's what it is. It's not personal, it's business. And we got to learn that because we're always holding that again. Man, I don't, what are they going to say? What are, fuck what they going to say. Right. You the one got to do all this work. So it's about you and your mental. So keep your mind straight. Is that why you're able to go so hard and bridge the gap and, and focus on the Snoop Youth Football League and show these kids, you know, expose them to something positive and everything different from coming up the way that you came up? I think that's what it is, Fred, that I got the opportunities to have money and relationships in the spotlight to give to them. So one thing about me, people know I love giving the light to others. So when it comes to them babies and I know that 1% is going to make the NFL. Right. But if I push hard, I may move it to two. Mm -hmm. I may move it to three because my league has put more kids through college and the NFL than some of these high schools in the state of California combined. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm doing great work because I'm aiming at my target, the kids, not the people that's talking. I'm aiming at the babies. You mentioned raising the percentage. Mm -hmm. And it's not only raising the percentage that have the opportunities to get to the NFL, it's also them 
understanding the game, and I don't mean the football game, the game of life. Right. And you've been able to do that. We sat down with C.J. Stroud, who was a part of your league before his last year at Ohio State, and immediately after he was drafted. And the one thing about him, and I kept messing, I was like, man, you are so California. But you could see that he understands the game, he understands how to move, but he's still true to his roots and his foundation. What does it make you feel when you're starting to see these kids that come up through different things you're doing in the community have that level of success? Well, first of all, rest in peace, Ronnie Hillman. He was the first player to make it to the NFL and get a Super Bowl. Um, when I see my babies, man, when I see them playing on Fridays first, then Saturdays, then Sundays, I mean, I'm, I'm tears of joy, man. That's what makes me cry, but it's tears of joy because I know that they had to put that work in. Yeah, I believed in you, I gave you an opportunity, but you had to go do that work. You had to go get that knowledge because football now is from the neck up. Ain't no more just dumb jocks. Yeah. These guys are being taught fundamentals in the classroom first, and then they get to do it on, on, on the football field. What we say is, you know, we teach scholars, student athletes. You want to be a student athlete first. You want to be a student first because when you get in the NFL, Here's this big ass playbook you're gonna have to learn. Here's all these schemes you're gonna have to learn. It ain't just run around because I'm fast and I'm good. So when I see my babies get to that level, that lets me know that they've done all of the work. They prepared themselves. And then the way they speak when they're in front of the camera. Even Juju, Juju Smith Schuster's out of my league. I love his personality because he's been like that his whole life. He's a kid, a big kid, but he's having fun on a big stage. Super Bowl winner. Yep. That was a great call, too, last year. Great call. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie was talking that stuff before the show started. What'd I say? Let, let's be real with the people, though. <laughs> like, you, he is a stealer. You know what I mean? Die you, hard. Die hard. So before we just even you start all that. All right, look, Freddie, look. <laughs> yeah. All black with a little bit of gold. <laughs> yes. That was the statement I was making today for y'all to let y'all know. <laughs> Don't do it. Hey, he, he got would, a lot of pride in that I Pittsburgh. I would have disappointed myself if I didn't think you would pull up like this. Yes, sir. And, and look, we... Our colors. Come I on now. It. This I guy see. right he, here. He, he did his work. We let him have it. He did what he's supposed to do. We let him have it. You know what I'm saying? No. You know what I'm saying? You know, we interviewed Coach Tomlin. And I was pissed off. And I asked him, like, Coach, when I was a free agent leaving Jacksonville, I still had a lot in my tank. What's up, man? What what happened? I wanted you, I was but you killed agent. us too much, man. You know how that is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, in our locker room, you know, you know, you know, you've seen stuff. it firsthand. Come get me. I did, but I didn't want you after you did all that shit to oh, us. Oh, come you, on, bro. You and Marshawn Lynch was two backs I didn't want. Don't period. do me like you I'm do. Because I'm like, um, no, you know, y'all not gonna do us like that. Then come in our locker room. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, hey, no pride, new friends. That's pride. Hey, we ain't got no new friends. And I've been in the locker room. Why didn't shot baskets against players? And they didn't took me in this room. I didn't went to the wide receiver room. Like y'all locker room was the shit. Pool table to yeah. all get out. And then, so when they come around, right? So Chan has been when bad. When we come around. Yeah, like, like when I let y'all, when I let when, they, like, when he let us. Yeah, like when, when I, he let us. When we invite y'all to the charity I can't events. By myself. Yeah, I, we, we I invite y'all to the charity events, and when we go to Coach Tomlin's Look, house. I've been a stealer longer than this guy indirectly. Plus, you, you just couldn't root for him. That's my little brother. Say that. My cousin Santonio Holmes, oh, Super Bowl. The MVP. one. So not I mean, the that's family. I'm a. It's somewhere in the bloodline, it's, it's so it's in your DNA. safe. <laughs> hey, all I know is this. We didn't been on one field that all of us did play on, and it was mine. I still ain't got no invite to Miami or Jacksonville. They opened the you doors in Pittsburgh. You ain't never invited to Miami. Miami is a fun town, brother. I took him to Tootsie's. He want to go stand on some grass. I took him to see the bitches and everything. Oh, there you go. Show him, show him the light. <laughs> show him the light, brother. Show him the light. You <laughs> see this damn Get grass. Get him out of the darkness and show him the light. <laughs> hey, Snoop, man. You're one of three people to have a top 10 hit in four different decades. Are you serious? The other two people are Jay-Z and Mariah Carey. You lying. I tell no lies. Damn. He's a new AI. He's not and lying. When, like, this motherfucker <laughs> got computer facts on him. <laughs> when you think about that, because conventional wisdom of watching your career mature would obviously say to someone, oh, OK, maybe he's not as focused on the music and he's not still making those hits. But to be along with those two names, one, it says about the excellence of your work, and two, longevity. When you think of the way you've been able to stay relevant both in entertainment and business, outside of the work, how have you been able to keep people drawn to you? I thank my mother for this. She taught me to be me as a kid. She used to let me come in the living room and dance with her friends and perform on Sundays and do speeches and, you know, 
different plays. She taught me how to play the piano, put me in different things to where I had to get to know how to be around people. Then I started selling candy. I started selling newspapers. I had to go door to door, had to learn how to communicate. All of these different skills that I learned showed me how to be around people. Then I got shipped to an all white school and had to learn how to be around different people. So all of those skills that I acquired as a young man, I took them and put them into my music and I learned to love people and love what I did. And if I love what I do and I'm true about it, you'll love it just as much as me. Sometimes as athletes, we don't understand the music game. As an athlete, if you ball out as a rookie, you're gonna get that money on the second contract. As an athlete, when we seeing you in the starting lineup, that usually comes along with some of the trimmings of life that you've been aiming for. Right. You recently said that when you signed with P and you know you got the house and you got the car, that was the first time you had something in your own name. Yeah. The beginning of my career, Suge Knight had everything in his name. And um, I don't know if it was good or bad, but it was the business. And when I got on No Limit, the first thing Master P did was took me to buy a house. We drove through this place called The Country, and he said, pick out any one you like. We just driving through a neighborhood. I'm like, fuck it, I like that one. Get out. Went up in that motherfucker, looked at it, signed it off, boom, next day, you and wifey go get a car. All this shit is in my name, so is she showing me you need to own your own shit? You don't even know the business. You know the show, but you don't know the business. This shit is called show business. Three years on No Limit, I'm gonna teach you the business. You talk about learning that business, and you know, I'm from New Orleans, and so P and cash money, like those were the people that I grew up on in music. You know, it was every now and then when, when there is a Snoop or there is a Pac or there is a Biggie, you get drawn to them because those are the names. But right. for us, it was those people. And we didn't see P as this, this mogul that it seems like he was being able to pass down game to people like you. You had a, a song that you were set to release that P told you not to. Yeah, it was called Fuck Death Row. You know, and you mentioned and that kind of saved your life, though. It did, because Pete was smart enough to know that I wasn't ready to go to war. I just was vigilant, and I was like, fuck that, I gotta defend my pride, but my pride would've got me killed. When sometimes you gotta be smarter than the average bear, you gotta know and understand why you're here. And I needed him as a big brother and a mentor to pull me out of that bad environment, take me to the South, show me a different world. My family from Mississippi. See, sometimes you gotta get taken back to your roots. And I was able to go see my grandmother. I was able to drive back and forth to see certain family members. And it was showing me how to like separate. Cause at that time I didn't know how to separate from the homies. I felt like I needed them with me everywhere I went. But they was baggage because they wasn't doing a the job. They was just on my job. Imagine working at McDonald's and bringing 30 motherfuckers with you every day. Right. And you ain't explaining to the manager why they're here. Just eating fries, making burgers, and doing what the fuck they want in the drive through line. Yeah, my we up here at McDonald's, we got this shit on lock. <laughs> and I'm letting this shit happen. Right, right. So, and I'm wondering why I'm never getting to the cash register, why I never get to move up, and I'm always on fries. Got too many fucking misfits with me. And it's my fault. It's always our fault, artists. It's our fault because we enable people to be around us, stand up and man up, kick rocks. If you ain't got a job, you can't be around. It ain't personal, it's business. And as you're talking to the artist, it's crazy you're hearing about that where you're, you're worried about your life. The game changed now. What, what changed that? I think the game changed when social media became, you know, the main draw. When we was coming up, you had to hear about stories from the news or somebody would tell you what they thought. Nowadays, you can control the narrative and five minutes of fame has become like everybody's appetite. And if you got that phone and you got that, that phone is a, is a, is a, is a terrible thing. If you don't know what you're doing with it. I watch people sometimes, I be like, man, somebody need to take his motherfucking phone. He acting a fool. <laughs> That's what happened. Like that, everybody wants to be a star and you can be a star for that moment. But can you hold the weight? Do you have longevity? Is this what you really do or is this what you're trying to do? So we got everything here. You, you, you're a part of Happy Dad and we got the great flavor, the death row. We got cereal, pancake mix. I mean, you dang near your own breakfast spot. You know, between you, Magic, and Shaq, I don't know who has done better in diversifying themselves in business, but also keeping a level of authenticity that is like, oh, that's still Snoop. Right. Uh, or that's still Shaq, that's still Magic. How are you able to jump in and out of all of these different things? And I know you mentioned, you said, you know, moms told you to always be you, 
But how are you able to do that and never become oversaturated or for lack of a better word, Snoop, honestly, corny, right? right? For us to always be like, nah, that's the OG. You know what I mean? No matter what you get into, that's the OG. And it always seems authentically you. I got a strong team of people around me that help me make great decisions too. It's not just me, it's a we thing, not a me thing. And the things that I like being a part of, I have to really love them. It can't just be about the finance. It's gotta really be about me being a part of it. So I like to pick and choose wisely with what I do and how I push certain things. But when it comes to like my business and the things that I'm doing, I just feel like anything can be sold if, you, if, you're, giving, if you're giving people a story. And I've been a great person that knows how to brand. So I'm starting to brand product. One thing Master P taught me on No Limit is when he was signing all these artists and everybody was arguing and getting mad and he didn't give me this and he didn't give me that. When he sold No Limit and moved on, he called me one day and he said, bro, I'm gonna tell you one thing, product don't talk back. One thing about this product, it ain't got no manager, no lawyers, no attitude. It just sit on the shelf and bring you money. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, don't that sound good, don't it? Do. <laughs> it do. That was gospel. I got, I'm about to say, I got to add some, some more game. <laughs> he don't want to restructure his deal. <laughs> Snoop, you brought up something I thought about, like the thought of being corny where no matter what you do, the streets love you. And a lot of people get the streets to love them. Right. But you can walk in the boardrooms. You yeah. can sit with CEOs. Bro, I have actually seen white folks river dancing to your music. <laughs> like, bro, you worldwide, no color, no race, no language. How do you do that if you can game up some young artists? Because I haven't seen nobody do it like you. I stayed me the whole way. I've had opportunities where it was certain movies that was given to me, certain things that were given to me, and I passed. It's OK to say no. See, you see everything that I do, but you don't see what I didn't do. You feel what I'm saying? And sometimes it's the no's that get you the yeses. Ice Cube told me once upon a time when I was like a young actor, so to speak, and I just was being Snoop Dogg and everything. Every time I call for a cameo, oh, I'm in, I'm in. And these was garbage movies, some shit that I don't even want to name. <laughs> Cube called me to his house one day and was like, hey, need to start saying no. I'm like, what you mean? Like, say no to some of that shit. If it ain't the shit, say no. They just using your name to make that shit look good, but you gonna look bad at the end of the day. So Cube gave me up on that, and I started saying no. And then it was a movie that came, Starsky and Hutch. Mm -hmm. So I heard about it. I went in the motherfucking audition. I, they had Chris Tucker, all kind of pictures on the wall. Snatched that shit off the wall. I came in there dressed like Huggy Bear. My role. Don't play with me. I had a pinky ring and all kind of shit. I went to popping lines with them. Boop, you got the role. Then they had another movie called Old School. Put me in that movie. So it was like me just being me, like, fuck that. I'm not finna go get no fucking agent and let no motherfucker talk for me. If I'm gonna get the role, I gotta come in there and show them that I can actually become this character. Cause they just think I'm Snoop Dogg. I gotta show them that I can turn into somebody else. And that's when I learned how to reinvent myself over and over and over again. Not just acting, but business. Snoop, these are all yours? Yeah. All of them. Some, uh, do they all just toys or some of them got sentimental value? Some of them got sentimental value right here. My wife got me this for my 50th birthday. I got this for her birthday. That's my Laker car right there. My other one I gave to Kobe Bryant before he passed away. He came to my spot and picked it up, took it back. So I had to make me another one because I gave him that one. That Lincoln over there, that motherfucker right there, that's what John F. Kennedy used to ride in that motherfucker back in the day. So. You understand me? <laughs> Continental. <laughs> like the president. Hey, hard. Hey, Snoop, stand on business. You know, you explain how P has been uh, instrumental in your life. Uh, showing you that there is life after, you know, rap and all of that, being an entrepreneur. And uh, surprisingly, we probably would think that you would make a bid for an NFL team or, or, or your Lakers, you know, basketball right, team right. or whatever. But you, you, you pivoted and went to the NHL. What Talk I about do? how What did I do, Freddie? You pivoted. Bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> what, and, uh, I, I, okay, say that. Speak on it. <laughs> you pivoted and went to the NHL, and you're talking about starting a youth league so that people who look like us or kids that look out like us, they can be exposed to the game and continue to grow it in that sense in our hood. Speak to how that came into existence. Well, I would love to be an NFL or an NBA owner, but they just not give us the opportunity. And that's just that. So the NHL is a clean slate, and I feel like they're open because the NHL has 34 black players right now as we speak out of all of the teams that they got. So I feel that, you know, look at what I've done with football, and who would have thought that I could have done that when we started from nothing to create what we have now? Hockey is a growing sport. 
it's a Canadian sport, so to speak, but it's a global sport, it's international. And I feel like black kids would love to play it if it was offered to them. If they knew how to get on the ice at an early age, they got athleticism. They didn't even think we knew how to play golf. They didn't think we knew how to play tennis. But lo and behold, Tiger Woods fucked the game up. Serena Williams fucked the game up. So it's like, if you give a kid a shot, this is what he gonna be. And I feel like it's so many kids that look like us that don't wanna play football, that don't wanna play basketball or baseball. They really wanna do hockey because it looks fun and it's exciting. And once you go to a hockey game, it's just as physical as football. Mm-hmm. That shit is fun. You mentioned the amount of uh, black players in the NHL. And we interviewed a few uh, NHL players and they spoke to us about the challenges and still seeing the discrimination from a, st- from a fan standpoint. Right. What do you think they're, they're gonna say when you're, you're part of a team that put a bid in for the Ottawa's in Canada as a, as a black potential owner? You think there'll be some pushback? That's crazy that you ask if, the, if I think there'll be some pushback. Um, I don't, I don't. If this was the NFL or the NBA, I would definitely say yes, but I don't think hockey got that feeling for me. I think they love me because if you go back to gin and juice, I had on a hockey jersey when hockey was nothing, mm. when nobody cared about it. Wow. So then you watch me do different things in the hockey world where I've hosted and DJed and showed up to games and you know done certain things with hockey players where it's like, I watch hockey have no personality. And I'm like, I can give it what it's missing. I could re- rebrand it, mm-hmm. not just the Ottawa Senators, but the whole NHL. And that's what the league needs. It's like, that's what happened with the, with football and basketball, they rebranded it. Yeah. Ain't no in-betweens. Right. They rebranded, they got rid of the old, put a whole new look on it, new span, new players, put them on commercials, shoe deals, this thing, movie stars, this, the oh, LeBron right. and them creating companies. It's like, it's business now. Right. They went to the tech area and all the Golden State Warriors got tech deals because they in Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. No one understand that. It's a business now. So why not let hockey do the same thing, but they just don't have nobody to, you know. Orchestrate hello. Yes, sir. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was obviously always a fan of your music. I became a bigger Snoop Dogg fan watching your reality show. And it was your relationship with your son that did that for me. We all understand the importance of giving back to the community. Because we all, we've all come from different places where there are a lot of kids that look like us, both male and female, that we're trying to show there's ways out of here. Mm-hmm. But charity starts in the home, right? If you can't be present there, you can't go out and be present for the rest of the culture, the rest of the community. Speak a little bit about Snoop Dogg, the, the, the husband, Snoop Dogg, the, the father, who seems to amazingly be able to separate himself from all that he's accomplished and be extremely present there. Well, me and my family, we friends. That's the first thing about our relationship. Me and my wife, like, she been there since the beginning, so she understands who I am. She allows me to be me, and she's my backbone. Like, always there for me if I'm ever down. Raised my babies, did 90% of the work, I just did 10. It always looked like I do all the work, but it's really her that did the majority of the work, schooling them, raising them, teaching them discipline. And I just, you know, had the finances and the, you know, the pizzazz with how to talk to them and how to raise them from just being real. And our relationship has been friends from, you know, from babies to now. How long y'all been married? 28 years. Bro, that's that's amazing, bro. I want to congratulate you on that, because nowadays the divorce rate is 50% plus. Yeah. What advice would you give these young boys? Because it sounds good with friends. Right. But, bro, you're going to get to year 12, then 15. Yeah, but it's happen. like, when, if you're a friend, we argue. Yeah. I argue with my friends all the time, right? Yeah. But we get an understanding because we're friends, and we know not to cross that line, and we know the respect level. But at the end of the day, it's like, I have to put more respect on her than I did in the beginning. Mm. In the beginning, I had less respect because I didn't know how to be a man. Uh, I didn't know how to be a father. I didn't know how to be a husband. So through that television show, I was able to look at myself and say, how do I better me? How do I be a better father, better husband, and a better person? And it helped me through football, through the television show, through dealing with other kids, just being a mentor. Like you said, it's always people that need me to mentor them outside of my home, but how good could I be if I'm not taking care of my home first? You know, you want information from me, but I got to be delivering it at the house first. It, it's hypocritical if I'm giving you all this info and I ain't doing nothing at my house. Yeah, she I, I, call you Calvin when she <laughs> hot with you? 
She, yeah, you, how you know? I'm just asking. <laughs> how the fuck question, you know? My, like, my that's what the question. fuck they do, man. She named one of my dogs Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the RS and Uncle Sam and maybe your mom, I'm trying to figure out who else on the planet call you Calvin. Just her. <laughs> and she only, you right, like, that's what the fuck they do. Like, they know that they, I don't like hearing that shit. Like, everybody else call me dog or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Calvin. That's what, like, you I trying to piss up. me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, how crazy does it have to be, man, for your government name to be Calvin, but everybody knows you as, as dog or, or, or Snoop, to have created a brand that, has transcended so many decades that is now truly who you are. That's crazy because Snoopy is who I got it from, the Charles Schultz character from Charlie Brown. Yeah. And it felt like they don't even talk about Cud no more. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get my little white brother and bring him back, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't like how y'all done left him behind, man. He's the reason I am who I am. <laughs> Snoopy, where you at? Snoopy, come home. <laughs> what the hell were you standing on in that video on top of rapping? That's the VIP that was a uh, local Long Beach record store that pioneered my career. All the celebrities used to go there. It's one of the cornerstones in Long Beach. It doesn't exist anymore, but the VIP records was the foundation to what we do. Calvin Anderson and his brothers really gave us the opportunity to make music, to give us a shot, to actually put our voice on tape, to give us a studio so we could actually, you know, hear what we sound like to like believe in ourselves. You got to hear it to believe it. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say. You know, you go from standing on top of, of VIPs and you tear the you tear the buildings down in New York. That how wasn't that came supposed about. to happen. New York, New York was a tribute to Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. They originally made that song. That's where I got the hook from. So we wanted to play the record for Hot 97 because we were there shooting the video and we got turned down. And when we got turned down, they allowed someone else to go to the radio station and then they turned up. And then they put, you know, the word out that we were here and then some things went left and right and we had to leave. So when we had to leave, the video in our minds was like, fuck that nice shit. That shit over with now. <laughs> you wanna act like that? Put my scene like this. Give me that old chorus commercial with the Rolling Stones where they were stepping through the city and shit. DJ Pooh, I wanna be kicking over buildings and shit, cuz fuck that. These you know what it is, cuz. But you, you you just spoke about the foundation. You know, <laughs> yeah, Fred, but I'm great. just saying, like, Fred, but, I was fired up, and then you come with this smooth Freddie T. You just spoke about the foundation. No, no, I'm just saying, if, you was, heat, if you're in the heat of the battle, right, <laughs> and you being friendly, then all of a sudden somebody hits you dirty, what you gonna do now? How See, you running? Right, no, you, you running soft, timid, or you running nah, hard? You gotta, I'm trying to run the motherfucking, motherfucking mama right. You ain't running to the side Everybody line. Gonna you, get I need it. a 31 or a 32. Let's get it. I don't need nothing outside of here. 31, right, 32, right ain't gut. no fucking in between. Right up the gut. To, to answer your question, the answer would be you turn the other cheek. Man, Who get the, the fuck, fuck is out you running the king, man? <laughs> <laughs> nah, he tri he's tripping. He's trying to be nice, right? It's too but, much fucking happy to have this nigga. Right. I'm about to turn the other cheek. Seriously, but the foundation, you spoke about the foundation much like when you were on the rapid fire with, with Molly and right, Stephen A right, on first take, right. they asked you West Coast rap or East, East Coast, Coast rap, and right. you took it back. You spoke about the foundation. Right. I'm looking at the bummer you got on. It's all East Coast. Yeah. Boy, Slick Rick. It's all East Coast. You, you, you know what I'm saying? So that's the, the, the foundation of, of the game. Right. And, and earlier I spoke about being, you know, how much respect you get, how much respect you give. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not a lot of guys in the game will do that. You don't you know? get it if you don't give it. Exactly. It has so, to be a part of your cut. Your, like, this jacket don't have nobody from the West Coast on it. Right. It's all East Coast. But this is the hip hop that I was raised on. Right. I fell in love with them first. And then it was somebody that rapped the shit that we was doing out here. But they were the blueprint. Like, they was the motherfuckers I wanted to go see perform and dress like and look like and Adidas and gold chains and mm -hmm. Fila suits and whatever the fuck they said, I want to do what they doing. That's the foundation. Hey man, the finals are going to be crazy. And our partners at DraftKings probably want us to make some picks. I like teams out there on the West Coast, but none more than Denver. And that's the team that's playing in the championship. And I see them getting it. I understand what y'all saying, but y'all know in the regular season, it doesn't mean nothing. Like my boys down in Miami have proven eight seed coming through. They playing ball right now. They're made for this. And you know that team's gonna come out on top. Well, y'all know what it is. It's the DraftKings Sportsbook app. 
Get with them, and they'll get you right where you need to be for the finals. And people still ask you about East and West and all. I don't see it that way. Like you said, I think social media, internet, everything more connected now. Yeah. Do, are people trying to push East versus West narrative? Because I don't see it. It don't even exist no more because there's no such thing as East and West because there's so many people from the East that live out here mm -hmm. and so many people from the West that live out there. And then our cultures have mixed. The gang culture is bigger on the East Coast than it is out here. Yeah. And the rap culture is bigger outside of the East Coast than where it started from. So we just switching hands right now, and it's like they go hand in hand. But what I want to say is that we shouldn't mix the gang culture with music for the violent reason. Let's mix it for the right reasons. We grown enough to know better now, so we have to teach y'all. Chan told Dion when Dion took the job at Jackson State that he'd leave. And well, he was right. And we got to talk to Dion at Colorado, and he talked about all the reasons and the things that he could still do because it's not about location, it's about a destination. Right. You've shown support for Dion throughout his career, and even now at Colorado. When you see things moving in that direction for an icon like that, what is it about Prime that keeps you connected to the things that he does? God. Me and Dion connected through God. Dion was on Death Row Records. Y'all didn't even know that. Must be the money was on Death Row Records. Dion used to hang out with us, but he never smoked, never drunk, but he would let us do everything around him. But Dion was like the spiritual advisor. Like when he was in the room, nobody wanted to do wrong. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? But he was there. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then as he grew as a man and we watched him become a father and a role model, we follow. We follow. Leaders, if you know how to lead, we're going to follow you. That's why he got the job at Jackson State. That's why he got the job at Colorado, because he's a leader of men. Mm. And if you can lead a man with some great information and lead him to the light, he's going to follow. So we followed Dion. Dion was one of the main reasons why I started my youth football league. We played against each other. We coached against each other. I coached against him the night he got into the Hall of Fame, and I announced him going into the Hall of Fame. And this means the world to me, because he was my friend when he was in his prime and to see him go to the Hall of Fame at the world. You got to do the same for Tupac Shakur. And, you know, much like we've seen in different situations, you know, with me, it was losing Sean Taylor at a very young time when he was ascending to be one of the greats to ever Cole. do it. And I play with him on Madden, still he in my motherfucking lineup. Yeah, you know, and people, when, when you see those, those young talents taken away, and a lot of times it's about, it's, because of our culture, because of our people, you know, what um, have you done as you've removed yourself from some of those things you spoke about in the 90s or being connected to the gang culture to let people like us learn that there are different ways to settle things, there are different ways to achieve and that we can all reach certain heights that we didn't necessarily believe we could when we had that small box community mentality? Well, the first thing I did was I ended my scenario with Suge Knight before I bought Death Row Records. I had to put out a record called Let Bygones Be Bygones. I spoke about it on the um, Arian Foster show and just wanted to end all of that madness. And I felt like being the bigger man would be the one to say, hey, I'm gonna give you the respect for everything you did great for me, rather than all of the things that people know that you did wrong. I'm gonna praise you for giving me an opportunity, for putting me on, for believing in me, for doing all of this and reversing the narrative as opposed to if I have an issue with you, no, let me praise our relationship for the great things that we had and maybe we can fix it. And if we can't, I'm gonna let you know how much you meant to me on the way out rather than let me bash you on the way out to make it more of a controversy. Now my friends is reacting off of what I just said Listen to what I said. Now, my friends are reacting off of what I just said. So if my friends see me, man, I respect you, brother. And number love. Right. You, you did it. Thank you for what you did for me. Now my friends can't have an attitude when they see. They can't be like, fuck that. They're going to be thinking what I just said. Man, dog, I respect for him. Mm. Let him live. Yeah. We got to teach respect. We teach so much disrespect. That's, we teach that every day. When are we going to start teaching respect? You've been through a lot. You came in the game real young. You've seen the ups and downs. You mentioned not having ownership, you know, of a lot of your stuff early yes, on. And um, you pivoted, you, you're a successful entrepreneur now as you continue to, you know, extend your career. And, and I see you on Instagram. You know, I follow you from afar. I've always been a fan, highly respect you. 
for a lot of times us, celebrities, entertainers, athletes, etc., on the outside, you know, it looks a certain way. We can smile, you're always smiling, chilling. You know, how, how, how is the pressure, or how has the pressure in your life been, you know, on your mental health? Do you feel any pressures? I'm gonna be honest with you. I went to go seek counseling. Me and my wife seek counseling, me and my family seek counseling, because there's certain things that you need to have another voice help you understand. And there's no such thing as being weak for asking for help. Mm -hmm. So I'm not one afraid to ask for help. But I'll say this, just about a week ago, my mom's birthday was April 27th, and we went to her grave site, and I was on Instagram Live, because I just wanted to share with people that I'm, you know, keeping her spirit alive, and then I had that gospel music on, and them damn songs came on, I started crying, <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> Mama working on me right now. She's trying to show my vulnerability in front of everybody to show that I miss her, but I'm strong enough to cherish the moments that I had with her. So it went from tears of sadness to tears of joy to me and my brother conversing and my kids was behind me. It turned into a beautiful day. But like those moments like that are moments I like to share with people to show them that I'm normal that I do have a moment where I do cry and I do feel like you feel, and I'm not always happy and I'm not always up. How much of that game do you give back to the up and coming, the young artists that are you know, trying to get to the point where you've made it? Now that's crazy that you said that because that's how I know I'm getting wise. I'm not gonna say I'm getting old. <laughs> you gotta know how to use the words. And, I, yeah, I mean, that's what too. I try to tell these dudes. Yeah, and you then when you Freddie T, Freddie T only seasoned. got you about five, ten years. Look, but when seasoned. you got when you got white in your shit, it's not gray, it's platinum. Bro, the same. Hey, okay, it's, okay. it's the platinum. And both both of y'all like to wear hats now. I think it's a reason. Yeah, the hairline may be moving back, but <laughs> with them locks you got, nephew, you'll be right behind me. <laughs> with your Stevie <laughs> Wonder looking ass. He wanna show off, Snoop. He tried to show off because he, he got the new like, teeth. I know right this shit pretty. He's trying to show yeah. off. I got that light skin shit. He gonna be like Jerry you know, Rice was yeah, with the Raiders. Look at it. You you gonna, gonna, gonna be just like Jerry Rice with was the with the Raiders. Yeah. Hey, he's just gonna have that twin the back. <laughs> it gonna be a tail. Man, listen, he said I, Jerry Rice with the Raiders. I saw Stevie Wonder hit a free throw on the internet. I can see anything in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> What a goodness. I wasn't even high. And speaking of that, bro, how in the hell did you smoke weed your way all through, even when it was unacceptable? You were still smoking weed. I know you missed out on some deals. Because I wouldn't allow the industry to make me like other things, you know? When you're in the industry of Hollywood, they offer you other things, things that are addictive, things that could kill you, things that could harm you, things that could jeopardize your future. Right. And I maintain, because I had certain family members that did other things. Yeah. Mm. And I sold other things. So I knew the effects of it. So I said, one thing about me, I'm going to stand tall on what I believe in. It's not an image. This made me feel good. And I was a youngster. And this was like my vice to help me cope with the mental, you know, stability that I didn't have back then. Right. I didn't have no counselors or nobody. We just was young, living life, being young, notorious, being famous and successful and trying to live this life and get this life. It was like so much. So this was the cure to helping me sustain. And I felt like, damn, this shit is not hurting me, it's helping me. And then to find out that it's actually health benefits to it and moving into the future, I'm like, thank God I was on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you were before his time. You was really, I was gonna say that. <laughs> because now the weed business. Hello. You was ahead of it? I mean, it is what it is. I, I always say that sometimes they could use you to be the example of what it can be. And I, I've done that with clothing, right? I had a clothing line called Snoop Dogg Clothing in the early 90s. And um, New York was the fashion industry. So when I come out with my clothing line, they had Rockefeller, that I mean Rockaware, they had Sean John, they had all of these East Coast lines. So I put my shit out. And naturally, I put some crippin' on mine with the rag. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, rag, what I represent. First thing they said was, uh, this is gang related, they'll never be at Macy's, they'll never take it at these big stores. And you know, I'm like, okay, well what I'm supposed to do? They say, you should kill that idea and come with something else. So basically they shut my clothing line down. Three years later, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all these motherfuckers got my Paisley print on they shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting back like, mm, that's how they work. Wow. They work like that now, huh? I get it but we have to live and learn and get better. So once I started getting other deals and moving in place, 
I was on Adidas before Kanye West. They called me about bringing him to the thing, bring him in. They get this the job, this and squeeze me out. He, <laughs> I used to go up there and get free shit. All of a sudden, they like, you can't come up here anymore. Kanye has this side of the building. I'm like, well, goddamn, I'm the n <laughs> <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> so now, I'm with Sketches. Yeah. And Sketches will be making the Snoop Dogg shoes moving yeah. forward because they're a company that understands and believes in me, and they know what I mean to the culture. Like, you got to find people who know your value, like Lamar Jackson. He had to make the Ravens understand his value. Sometimes you got to make them understand what you're worth. Right. And Snoop, everybody know you smoke. I got one more weed question, but a real one, a legit one, because you're always around kids. You have children, and you smoke, like you're saying, you openly smoke. What's the conversation like with a young teen oh, wow. that's playing ball, one of your students, one of your players, but they are interested in marijuana? Well, what I like to tell them is, you know, understand what you're doing before you do it. You know, because you only get one body and one mind. And you need to make sure that your body and your mind is ready to receive this information that you're about to give it. I didn't experiment with this at an early age. I waited till I was like 17, 18. Yeah, when I was young, my uncle used to let me hit a roach or two, but I wasn't like every day on it like I wanted. And what I would say to a young player is, what's more important to you, getting high or getting to the next level? And if you're in a sport, more, more than likely they're gonna test you. And if they're gonna test you, they're not gonna test your abilities, they're gonna test you for drugs too. And this is considered a drug if you don't have a medical prescription for it. So I think you should focus on your skill rather than the ability to get high or to treat yourself till you get to a level of excellence. And excellence right now don't mix with this and that. Hey Snoop, I wanna go back when I was asking you about being in the safe space and what game you give back to the young guys, you know, the young artists that are coming up. So I wanna ask that and I also wanna ask what has been your biggest pivot in life? The things I get back to the youngsters, they always call me for information on business, life, just the moves that they make, the people that they should be associated with, relationships, certain, you know, people that they want to sign with, how they want to do certain deals. They just ask for information and I love giving it to them. I think my best pivot has been becoming a father mm -hmm. because becoming a father showed me how to be a man and how to be a husband. So that was the greatest pivot that I could make because I was always choosing my career, my homies, my friends over being a father. Mm. And when I made that move to become a father, everything else fell in place. The respect that you have in any room that you walk in is all that needs to be said about how everyone sees you as a man. But I think the, and I've used the word authenticity because I can't really figure out another one that truly explains like, when you're on the phone, when you're in a, in a boardroom, when you're on TV, you're constantly the same person. The level of consistency that you've shown for four decades is truly unprecedented in entertainment. And so to be able to do that, I just want to applaud that. But the other thing is, man, like, you're just freaking likable. You know what I mean? Like, like real talk, like you're just a, a likable dude. I would want to end by asking this question. There is a certain level of success that people and individuals are trying to reach. And you've had so much success. You know, we are members of the Happy Dad family as well. You know, you've now gotten into that. You're speaking of ownership in the NHL. What is next or what is the, the end goal for Snoop Dogg? Like when, when, when can, when will Snoop Dogg retire and there just be Calvin? I don't know, man, because I feel like RC, like retire, eh. I watch the greats, like the great coaches and the great players, when they not doing what they do no more, they just don't feel the same. Mm. And I don't want to like depart the industry. That's why I do so much, because it's going to be something that I'm doing where it's going to look like I'm not doing it, but I'm still doing it. That's why I do so much right now, because I'm trying to figure out what is it going to be. Is it going to be announcing and broadcasting? Because people say I'm good at that. And I love sports and I love to, I would love to have a job like Shaq and Stephen A. And you know, when y'all be on them shows in the morning, I love that. That's why I try to jump on and get on. I don't know what my future holds, but I think I'll never retire. I just think I'll pull back and allow others to shine and become more of the owner.
See, right now I'm the player. You're so used to seeing me score and put up money and get highlights. I think I want to be the owner now, just the one that just sits at the game like this while my players are scoring for me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. If that makes sense. Nah, man. Listen, I love that, man. Thank you so much. Uh, love the fact that we are a part of your family. Uh, shoot, whether it's Happy Dad or whatever it is, man, you've been on. You the OG. And the last thing is this, man. Be careful, because they say Jordan Poole looking for you in the offseason. Hold up. We can't let you go without asking you a top five Lakers of all time, bro. Top five Lakers? Yeah. That's an easy call. Yeah, we can't let you go, though. Let's run it down. Top five run Lakers it. of all time. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Is it, are we going five to one, or are we just no just order? Top, you can put them where five. you want them at. Okay. Mm -hmm. These is five. You understand me? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, formerly known as Lou Alcinda. Yep. <laughs> To Malk and them got a hold of them. <laughs> <laughs> Magic, Irvin Magic Johnson out of East Lansing. You understand me? All right, all right. Kobe, Jelly Bean Bryant. <laughs> That's three, right? That's, That's three. three. Oh, Lord, it's going to get hard. Shaquille, the real deal, O'Neal, man. Okay, Come okay. on, baby. Now, the last spot, this is crucial. This is crucial because it ain't none of them new guys. They ain't done enough. Mm. It's going to be the Michael Cooper, mm. James Worthy. I could say Jerry West. I could say Will Chamberlain. You only get one, though, Snoop. I'm going to go with Will to steal. He averaged 50 a game, man. <laughs> That's before cameras. He probably had 70. You know they were cheating him. Will probably had 70 points and 75 rebounds. Give him 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you're naming things, I would also like to, add, to ask you this, though. Give me the five best West Coast rappers. Five best West Coast rappers. Ice Cube. Ice T. Ooh. E40. Mm. Too short. Mm. Snoop Dogg. You still a rapper? You want a battle? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I will. <laughs> you got something? What you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do, dog. Come on now. <laughs> what you got? You know you'll jump don't on a feature every man, now and Don't again. shake the tree. It may be a leopard up there. <laughs> but you, you jump on a feature, but you, I ain't just heard you spit no time recently. Well, just to let y'all know, me and Dr. Dre working on the album right now that should be out later this year. Ooh, Boy. Mm, so I have to give you, you know, give you that there, there. 30 years later. That's crazy. Ooh. Hey, hey, you know Dylan Brooks poked a bear too now. Yeah. He got honey all on his hands, don't he? Oh, boy. <laughs> he ain't got no job either right now. <laughs> He'll be all right, though. He'll, he'll be all right because I like his spirit and I like the way he plays. He reminds me of them old school NBA players. Right. So shout out to Dylan Brooks for being the villain. You know what I'm saying? We are real players around here, man. We want to see you get a job. We want to see you eat. Yeah. We want to see you back in the league yeah. on a team because I love your spirit and I love the fact that you wear Snoop Dogg braids when you're out there. Love it. <laughs> Speaking of that, Dude was a very important part of why that team ever got to where it was. And oh, they're going to find out when yeah, he's he not there. Yeah, and I feel like they, they fostered that culture there. And the and fact they, that they, they threw him out. And they threw, and they threw him under the bus. When they you know, really wanted to do that to the other one, but he's too big. You can't do it. You can't do it to the star. You can't. But at the same time, if the star ain't ready to handle a whole city, that's a young man. He ain't ready to have the city on his back. Yeah. Like, you got to take on that role. When you become the face of the franchise, you got the whole city on your back. And sometimes we become that and don't understand what comes with that. Same with me. When I became Snoop Dogg, the big rapper, I didn't understand that I had all of this shit on me. I thought I could still go to the hood and still gang bang mm -hmm. and do all the stupid shit. And there wasn't no social media back then. Mm -hmm. So imagine all the shit I did that you didn't see. So that's why I don't bash the youngsters when they make mistakes. I'm here to be, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Yo, your get back got to be way harder than the, than the setback. What your get back look like? Right. Mm -hmm. Give them them words instead of, man, why you fucking up, man? You, you know, I don't want to hear this shit about you on TV messing. I'm, I'm not that uncle. I'm your uncle that's like, it's all right. Shit, now you got to see what I did. But let me tell you how to get out of it. That's the kind of uncle I am because them the kind of uncles I had. My uncles was cool as a motherfucker. Let me hit the beer, hit the joint, but they would never let me do nothing that would fuck my life up. Mm. Just listen to what I said. They would let me dibble and dabble, but when they seen that I had something in me, if it was athleticism, they'd get your ass out here and get on that football field. Get in that studio. Get your shit right, nephew. You got something we ain't got. So That's I'm, my job. I'm gonna go put me a DraftKings play in based on what you tell me. Finals prediction, the Lakers and who? 
it's up and down on the East. It's up and down on the East because Miami with Jimmy Buck is healthy. They nasty. Mm. And remember that team, the Miami team is the team that we beat in the bubble. Yep. It's a lot of them players still on that team. And they had action in that bubble. And they probably feeling like, you know what? Nobody paying attention to us. We already didn't hit Giannis. If we could hit Giannis, we could hit anybody. Yeah. That's what I would be saying if I was on the squad. Like, bro, he's the goon with the spoon. It's him. He, as the, the way he just, and he had the basket. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. That's some hard shit to stop. Motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Motherfucker already at the basket. Yeah. <laughs> so if you, if you do, Get the TV deal, because, you know, like I said, we saw you on with Stephen A. What would that deal look like for you? Like, what, what, what do you want to do? Because to me, like, even when you do the, the funny joints, like you and Kev, uh -huh. or when, you, when you're with Stephen A, you, 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 could, you could button it up and still be Snoop. What would be your premium job? I need my hair to be let down. I can't have no Disney restrictions and all. I need to be able to say what the fuck I want to say, do what I want to do, have guests come on. and be frequently and speak about sports the way we'd like to. Because there's a wall that you guys got on those sports yeah. shows and you can't break it. They let you say a few words and do a few things, but you can't really break that motherfucking wall like we be at the house. Like, motherfucker, say this. Oh, hell no, nah, fuck that, Stephen A. No, nah, that's some bullshit. <laughs> like, ain't nobody there to match that. No filter. You know what I'm saying? It's just, right. it's just that you get this side of it. Like, fuck that, I'm gonna give you both sides of it. Like, we're gonna take a caller right now. But we'll, yeah, man, I was watching this shit earlier. Man, that motherfucker didn't know what the fuck he was talking about, dog. I know, my that's why you're on my show. But anyway, <laughs> bop, bop, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit like we that. We need a Snoop soundbite. Real the, shit. No, we need, man. Call us, call in, like, unfiltered. Just Remember how we used to be as kids? We could call a radio station yes. and win tickets. And, like, it was the, the engagement. It ain't there on a, the Zoom shit ain't real. Let a motherfucker call from at the house that's a real fan and let him speak his mind. No matter what the fuck he say. Now you're going to get both sides of the coin. You're going to get the perspective from the actual fan that's at the house watching this shit, not just your perspective. Is Martha Stewart bad, like, in person? Because I like her. Because she got, like, that old lady. Where you going, Fred? This, this, this happy dad death row running through me. You know, I got an old bladder, man. Yeah. about Martha. It's a prestigious look to her, but it's just, like, a little sexy. Boy, tell me, did you say Martha Stewart yes, had a prestigious look? Like a, it's like, ooh, print, you, you, you the money. vice principal, but I can come in your office. He looking at that money. <laughs> you, you a gold he, digger. He, he cold, no, ain't he? Like, you a gold you know, digger. Like, oh, a no. male gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> like Martha Stewart. <laughs> and she oh, got a lot them. of money, man. <laughs> hey, hey, well, she been, I, and she been to the pen. Oh, oh, yeah. This, this body cheap. This body cheap. I said this for pennies. She know how to braid hair, too. She was locked up. I'm sure she'd get you right. <laughs> I can see you sitting in her lap, and she doing this yeah, yeah. Don't do Boy, you sitting in <laughs> Martha Stewart lap? Look at that neck going to be so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate you, OG. Man, thank y'all, man. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you stupid. Martha Stewart, dog? Martha Stewart thick a little bit. Hey, Kev, give him some of these cereals to taste. For yes, real, I want him to take some of this shit on. Yeah, shit, we this might shit is good. Yeah. Ready to go, Is this go. one open? Yeah. Not that one. Take a picture. Take a picture here with the question from the back. All right. We're getting a move. Hey, but that Laker, the, the joint on the back of it, though? Yeah, nah, that's clean. That's clean, man. The, uh, the portrait? That's thing, huh? You should have seen the one I gave Kobe. That's the one hard, I gave bro. Kobe. Was that was a vert? Yeah, the one I gave Kobe, was. it was like this one, like this Impala right here. Mm -hmm. But it had, it had all of the great Lakers on the back of it. I had uh, Kareem, Cooper, and they all signed it. That was That's the dope, that was though. the crazy shit. Right, I had right. pulled my shit up to Jerry Buss when he got his star, and they all was there. Jamal Wilkes, Michael Cooper, and all of them walked out in the street and signed my shit. I'm it's like, huh. And then when it's I gave it to Kobe, because I was like, look, uh, this is your shit. And when I showed him the back of that motherfucker, like, he was hey, like, hey, he was like, man, everybody signed it. I'm like, yeah, look, all of them signed it. Mm -hmm. And he wow. went on the way, but he got his family still got it. That was that oh, was the awesome. best day of my life to give him that. Like, as a Laker fan, like, this is on behalf of the whole West Coast. You need a lowrider, cuz. You represent us. This is our culture. I remember I was leaving the Bahamas. I went to the Nassau to celebrate my birthday. I'm on the plane, and I get a text that the Kobe thing happened. Just like 9-11, we all remember what we was doing, where right, we was at. Right. 
Where were you at? And I, I mean, I'm sure I know what your reaction was, but you remember? I was day? on the road. I was on the road, and I'm like, this shit ain't real. Nah, man, stop playing with me, right. man. This shit ain't real. Like, no, I didn't want to believe it. Then they were saying Rick Fox was with him and this. So I had right. Rick Fox's number. I called Rick Fox. He didn't pick up. And I'm like, hold on. Then I start watching the news. And I'm like, God, this shit just, I, I didn't want to believe it. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because you didn't see it, yeah. you can't believe it. Right, right. It's like, no, I, I'm not going to believe that. No, I didn't see it. I don't believe it. And still to this day, I can't believe it because I didn't see it. But yeah. it's just like you got to live with it and you got to know that it's God's plan. Right. We just here. In Damn. three years, that's crazy. Is there, oh, sick. Got it. And let's do a fun one. Three, two, one. You want to do another? <laughs> I don't give a damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I take the same page everywhere I go. Every yeah, fucking face. That's the same shit I say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn the Auto placement, huh? Look at this back here. Act like he worked for Louis Vuitton or some shit. <laughs> turn the whole pole. I <laughs> said, he said, he turned it over. Oh, he's doing this Louis Vuitton hey, bullshit. Hey, nigga. He trying, he trying to bend the hangers out. If I do, it's too. I'm gonna fix this all. All right, three, two, one. And one more. Three, two, one. Freaking the OG, man. Hey, that was cool, bro. That was we dope. appreciate it. The nigga. OG. Yes, bro. Yes. Nigga, been a fan, man. Been yeah. waiting. Hey, Snoop had me 13 rapping stuff. I know I wasn't supposed to be rapping. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a great show, man. It's a great fucking okay, show. She jump in. Oh, I don't do pictures. You're just she does. She like that. She, she, she gonna oh, play. She gonna oh, play like she did. Come here, come here. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Get in there. Come on. Get in there. Come on. Oh, this is unusual. She only take pictures with cowboys. That's true. They That's give right. me shit because I don't post on my Instagram. I post like twice a year. You'll be, you, you'll you'll be on my Instagram. It. You'll make it. So look, Snoop, <laughs> it's only the show she really liked. Now, we've been doing this show. We had over, like we probably got like 150 shows. So she's actually put on her page like four. So we coming over, like, you going to post Snoop, huh? Got to yeah, do we, it, yeah, baby. Yeah, no, she yeah. only posts the people. She, you got to be really she, important. She you. Like, Appreciate that. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up.